unsuspecting stranger had better know the truth of wrong from right. Cause the eyes of the ranger are upon you. Any wrong you do, he's gonna see. When you're in Utah, look behind you. Cause that's where the ranger's gonna be. All right, good morning, campers. Uh, we just got up. Our little fan helped uh, us to survive the night because it is very hot. I don't know if you can see uh, Bob the big orange ball back there, but uh, it's going to be very hot again today. So we're gonna go ahead and break down camp, have a little breakfast, and then get out here onto this beautiful lake and see if we can catch some fish or just to explore and uh, enjoy the day on the water before we have to get back onto the interstate. You wanna see our fan? It's so cool. So Ryobi, uh, a tool brand that you can commonly find at Home Depot, has 200 plus attachments for their batteries that you use for drills. And this is one of the attachments, is this fan. So this is a drill battery, a uh, four amp, and that's high. That's pretty nice. And this is low. So the packaging claims that for the low setting, it can last 40 hours. I don't know about that, but the high setting lasted most of last night and then we put it on low and it's still pretty good. That's all I gotta say about that. All right, after that Roby commercial, we're gonna <laughs> out onto the water and see if we can stay cool and enjoy the day and eat our Pop-Tarts. Mm. I don't know what mine said. Mmm, that really tastes like Fruit Loops. That's a great way to start the day. So for fishing today, what we've read and talked into the guys at the local bait shop was that most people use these herring and they cut these up like uh, cut bait and then they just put them on a jig head and then you just play around with the depths until you can figure out where the fish are holding, depending on the temperature, and where on the lake, which is, sounds pretty simple, but this is a massive lake. There's plenty of depths and plenty of uh, location. So hopefully we're gonna cut these up and hopefully we can uh, put a striper or a smallmouth or something in the boat today so we can have a nice lunch. All right, first striper looks like. Uh, while we were trolling around trying to find a spot, uh, I just thought I'd put the spoon out. And this little baby is. All right, first fish. <laughs> first fish of Lake Powell and our first striper for either of us, period. So awesome. I, I think it's a little too small, so we're gonna throw it back. <laughs> All right, Elizabeth's hooked up. Don't know what it is, but uh, this is uh, this is oh, our pole. Oh, it's a striper. From, this is our pole from Guam, which is awesome. It's a striper. There we go. Woo! Oh shit! Rock bottom it. You're rock bottom it. All right. Oh, nice little striper. So Elizabeth's got off. We're hoping that we can get one in the boat uh, because we're hungry for lunch. And as you saw, we're tired of eating Spam. Oh, nice little striper. Nice little striper. Oh yeah. Look at that. So on Lake Powell, there's no limit on striper. On and walleye. On the size, uh, striper and walleye. So this, this little guy is gonna be our lunch. So just big enough for the two of us. We're not here to get, uh, you know, catch a million striper, but we just want something to eat. 
So this little guy right here is gonna be it. If you've never seen our channel before, we have this uh, neat little uh, post that comes out here and you can put a bait platform in it, which also has two rocket launcher uh, fishing rod holders. So it's super handy for cutting bait and prepping. Anyway, just a fun little table. Always can never have too much table space on a boat, so. So while Chris is cleaning this fish, um, another reason why we wanted to come to Lake Powell is because we've actually been here before, but not on the lake. So when we were first starting our YouTube channel, we went to this place called Alstrom Point, which is actually just on the rim of the canyons above Lake Powell. As you can see here, Lake Powell in uh, the very southern part of Utah, kind of straddling the Utah-Arizona border. And we're not very far from where that point was. And I remember when we came camping, we wanted to come back, especially with a boat, so we could go to the lake that was down below in the canyon. So it's kind of a nostalgic reason why we wanted to come, but also, you know, uh, our christening of fresh water for our boat once we picked it up from California. Just scaling it, because we're gonna cook this fish whole. It's not a real big fish, so I'm gonna treat it kind of how we treat, uh, you know, little trout and stuff like that. We're just gutted it, and we're gonna figure out a way to cook this whole fish on a fire, and then we'll just rake the meat out, uh, rake the meat out with a knife or a fork, or we might go Guam style with it. We have a little bit of mayonnaise and some hot sauce, and do something as close as we can get to a mayo and kimchi base right now here on the boat. Because uh, in Guam, for the three years that we were there, that's probably the number one. Uh, fish recipe that I saw people use and suggest to me was mayo kimchi base and then grill it. So we might do that There's a lot of wave action that occurs on this lake and it's because this is a pretty popular spot apparently to bring a wakeboard boat which make huge wakes and uh, it's kind of funny it's like the ocean shore with the water lapping up all the time in little waves but it's from all of these uh, wakeboarding boats going by. All right so we found an amazing spot to have lunch as you can see back here. Um, some of the most ridiculously beautiful scenery we love the state of utah we've spent very little time here but it is so stunningly it's beautiful so pretty the turquoise water mixed with this bright red rock is just amazing yeah these canyon walls are uh i mean there's nothing else i mean there's equally things beautiful to this in the world but there's nothing more beautiful that's a big statement right there. that's a bold statement <laughs> um we got our little fire ring going we're gonna go ahead and start a fire we have just a little firewood left it's really hard to fire in firewood around here um, well, these tumbleweeds uh, ignite like the Dickens, so that's, it, that's a nice flame starter. The tumbleweeds that line the lake shore burn harder than anything I've ever seen in my life. They burn so easy. Um, I think that's why they mandate that you have to have all fires below the high water mark or something. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to go ahead and get our little fire started, get some coals going, and we're going to get that little striper out and cook it and have a little lunch. I am dead set on, after watching one YouTube video a month ago, trying to use a rock slab to cook the fish on. And if this ends up terrible, it's 100% my fault, but I'm being stubborn about it. So. And it's uh, time to get to cooking because it's currently 96 degrees, supposed to get to like 107, 110 today. And after we eat, uh, we just kind of want to go explore and maybe do a little swimming and do a little something other than uh, being directly in the sun and not in the water. Yes. So let's get to cooking. This tumbleweed, which is all around the lake, as an East Coast person, this is a fascinating thing. And I didn't know this was invasive. This is native to like Russia and the uh, Mongolian steppes, I guess. And in Canada, they call it like Russian grass or something like that, Russian sagebrush. But anyway, this was not introduced into the United States until like the mid 1800s. Um, but anyway, you see it everywhere and you associate it with the West, but it's not even from here. But what it is good at is when it dries up, it starts so easy. Uh, it's almost scary how easy this stuff lights. It's just dry and hollow and just immediately lights like that. But uh, for anybody from this side of the country, this is stupid. But to me, this is fascinating how 
abundant and how invasive this plant is and how awesome it is at starting fires. That's one click of the lighter and we were, we're to this point. Didn't have to use paper towel and no. cardboard. This beach that we found is Slab City. Not the one with the truck campers and people living off grid. But as far as my rock platform slab to cook the fish on, we have lots of options. I have no idea how to determine what is good and what is bad, what's gonna break when it heats up. But because it's already over 100 degrees right now, they're preheated. So I just have to choose one. Maybe this one? Should I just rinse it off on the lake? Sure. Okay. I think it's gonna crack when the heat gets it though. Yeah. Probably. Just to get the dust off of it. Not like it's gonna be sanitized or anything, but it is really hot to the touch. Okay, let's go put this over the flim. Okay, I have the slab, I have the fish. We're just gonna go ahead and throw it on there and see what happens. And if it takes a while, we'll just swim while we're waiting. done so we're gonna scrape the meat off of it and then we'll add our kimchi sauce but you can see it's nice and flaky and the skin stuck to the stone but that's okay because uh, you know I'm here or there on whether or not to eat the skin I'd eat it if it was still attached but that was nice This thing is still bubbling. You can see all the, the bubbles still from it cooking on the other side, crisping up a little bit. But this is exciting because it's our first catch and cook stateside. Got most of the meat off this side, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. Oh, oh no, maybe I can't. Oh no! Oh, I'll, I'll get this stuff. It looks delicious. It's it does all look really good. This kind of helps actually because the bones are stuck to the skin and the skin is stuck to the rock, so I'm just peeling meat off. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. No. It's the only downside of eating fish is picking those bones out. It's a messy sort of meat. All right, we got uh, almost all the meat off of that fish. So uh, cooking method worked fantastic. And now we're gonna go with our Guamanian inspired sauce. And thank you Chick-fil-A for providing the free sauce packets. So mayo is usually the base and then they usually add a kimchi sauce but they don't have that at Chick-fil-A, so we're just using Texas Pete hot sauce. We don't have chairs, uh, which is the limitation of flying, but squatting is okay too. Okay, and then we do also have salt and pepper packets, also from Chick-fil-A. <laughs> It 
It's like a fish salad, like an egg salad or chicken salad, but it's a fish salad. And I'm really psyched about this. And Chris had a brilliant idea is um, last night, last video, we had cold tortillas because we didn't really have a way to get them warm over the fire. But now that we have this slab going, we can just put these on top. Okay, I made little mini ones, little, I guess they're like tacos, little street tacos. Oh. Mm. Don't let any go to waste. Actually super good, very few ingredients, zero vegetables, which I'm always excited about. Oh my gosh, wow, it's like creamy fish. Yeah, but it's uh, absolutely delicious. Our little uh, substitution for mayo and kimchi based fish. Mm -hmm. But absolutely delicious. Couldn't get any fresher catch and cook than that. We just caught this fish 20 minutes ago and now it's already going in our bellies as a taco. So delicious. Uh, Lake Powell's really living up to what we were hoping it would be since the last time that we camped at Alstrom Point. We're looking down at this lake. Mm -hmm. Whole lot of fun. Super hot, but whole lot of fun. We definitely want to come back maybe not in the summer, but in early fall or something if we could. Just when there's less boating activity and it's a little cooler. I think it would be amazing. It's still amazing now though. It's probably over a hundred degrees now. It's about noon. It's about 1230 right now or 130. We don't know because our phones keep going back and forth because we're right on the time zone change. It is hotter out here than when Nancy Pelosi got asked that question by the reporter if she thought that politicians should be able to regulate the industries that they trade stocks in. Over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he received from you? No, absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's how hot it is out here. <laughs> and she has a five times better trading record than Warren Buffett, who and does Warren it full Buffett time. Warren Buffett exclusively trades stock. Yeah. But that don't look shady at all. But that's how hot I am out here. And that's how shady it isn't. I would say it's hotter <laughs> than a uh, whore in church, but this is... What she does is far worse than a whore sitting in church because a whore in church is trying to do something right. That lady ain't trying, <laughs> ain't trying to do nothing right. I look up to a whore in church. I lo don't look up to Nancy Pelosi. But anyway, we're going to go find a place to calm, to get cool. It is 105 degrees. We're going to go find a place to explore. And swim. Come on. If you want to, come with us. Yeah, come on. It's okay. And if you don't, it'll make me feel bad because it's my birthday. Uh, turning 30 is a big deal. And so if you guys don't want to come with uh, me on my birthday, that's... It's hurtful, but it's fine. But I wish you would. Let's go do a little more exploring around Lake Powell. I think Lake Powell and this uh, Glen Canyon recreation area. I think it's prettier than most national parks. <gasps> this one ain't dumb. He's trying to trick us. I, I'm saying it. I think this is prettier. In fact, I think this is prettier than probably most places on planet Earth. And uh, I don't know why it doesn't get more rec recognition. Some, us East Coast people, we don't even think about Lake Powell. We don't know what it is. But this is prettier than almost any national park I've been to. And you can touch anything. Yep, and you're not confined to uh, uh, certain gates and certain things and- uh, Certain trails. You have to go with a tour group and if the government shutdown happens, you can't access it and all that nonsense. None of that nonsense here. This is just wide open, true freedom that we've been looking for. We found it on the beach in North Carolina. Now we found it here again in Arizona. Just absolute pure freedom, just exploring around. Nothing but rocks. Feel like I'm in the set of trimmers, just looking for Kevin Bacon. <laughs> well, it just suddenly hit me, you know. Of course, I'm always looking for Kevin Bacon, but you know how that goes. Is that for your love of Footloose? Lots of reasons. Ren and Footloose is a big deal, but also uh, uh, trimmers, Kevin Bacon, is also a big deal for me. And again, what's crazy is where we're standing right now, above this waterline, 
used to be underwater. All of this was underwater. This was a giant cove according to satellite images and maps. And that's just how far this water level has gone down, but it's also made these beautiful formations that you can crawl up and down now. And it doesn't obviously take that long for these plants to kind of take over and put down roots in this soil that's probably pretty nutrient rich since it's been wet for a really long time. All right, so that was pretty successful. This lake was a lot of fun. Definitely want to come back. Caught our first striper, did our first Lake Powell adventure and uh, learned a lot, uh, but we would love, yeah, would love to come back. And that was our first freshwater uh, catch and cook stateside. Yep, first successful. We've tried to do another one, but it was not <laughs> successful. Yeah. So we're gonna lay out and tan and go swimming because it is still really hot. Uh, even most of our camera gear is overheating. So I think it's about time to wrap it up. Yep, camera gears keep, uh, yeah, our camera keeps uh, shutting down. Cell phones, drones, and GoPros have all shut down on us. So the last one we got is this cell phone. We'll see you guys later. Uh, we're gonna sit here and have a beer and enjoy uh, what is left of my, one of my many 30th birthdays. <laughs> And then we'll get back on the road and see you guys next time next for week. some other adventure. We'll probably have Mona back in the truck camper and the boat in the mix. So stick with us and let's see what we have next week. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, it means a lot, every single one of the comments. And we used to only get a subscriber a week, sometimes a subscriber a month. We've been doing this for three or four years on YouTube. Now we're getting like 10 a day, which is small potatoes on YouTube. But to us, it means everything. Yes, and special thank you to the Patreon donors and people that donate to PayPal, especially Patreon for sticking around for this weird lull in transition and you're still super supportive and it's awesome. So thank you to everybody. Uh, it's the best birthday present in the world to see 10 subscribers a day for the last week. Even though you guys didn't know it was gonna be my birthday, I really appreciate that. And we'll see you next week. In the eyes of a ranger, the unsuspecting stranger had better know the truth of wrong from right. Cause the eyes of the ranger are upon you. Any wrong you do, he's gonna see. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Cause that's where the ranger's gonna be.